the most famous, least understood formula, true meaning of E equals mc squared. Einstein explained the meaning of his most famous formula in his 1905 paper entitled, Does the Inertia of a Body Depend Upon Its Energy Content? His paper delivered an unambiguously affirmative response to the question he posed. E equals mc squared means that a body's inertia, or initial mass, is directed by its energy content and directly proportionate to it. As Einstein himself wrote, the mass of a body is a measure of its energy content. Elizabeth Howell explains Einstein's formula as follows. One of the most famous equations in mathematics comes from special relativity. The equation E equals mc squared means energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. It shows that energy, E, and mass, m, are interchangeable. They are different forms of the same thing. If mass is somehow totally converted into energy, it also shows how much energy would reside inside that mass quite a lot. This equation is one of the demonstrations for why an atomic bomb is so powerful, once its mass is converted to an explosion. While a tremendous breakthrough, Einstein's theory still leads to confusion and generates questions for which Einstein provided equivocal answers. For example, Einstein's following statement, it shows that energy, E, and mass, M, are interchangeable. They are different forms of the same thing. The single word interchangeable stresses the formula's meaning. Ice and water can be interchangeable, but the energy released during the burning of a log can never return to its original source in any shape or form. While the quantity of heat the log produces can be identical to an unknown number of other substances, Einstein's formula certainly cannot lead to any other result. On the other hand, Einstein's conclusion if mass is somehow totally converted into energy, it also shows how much energy would reside inside that mass. Sounds more achievable and likely is closer to the author's intent. Still, the formula does not offer any practical method to determine how much energy resides in a certain mass. One must place absolute trust in the accuracy of the formula's result by multiplying the weight of mass, m, by the speed of light squared to know precisely how much energy resides in a given mass. Aside from inherent uncertainty, the formula only mentions mass. It does not demand its user to identify the kind of matter used in the calculation. Obvious questions arise. For example, does that mean a mass of one kilogram of wood would provide precisely the same amount of energy as a mass of a kilogram of TNT? A calculation using the formula produces identical results, and there is nothing in the formula that informs us otherwise an incomplete formula. The formula apparently relies on the chemical processing of mass and energy to reach the intended results. However, the formula's vagueness combined with the paucity of detail and little promise of accurate results makes the formula incomplete. Consider the following examples. Mr. A's formula results in X grams of sugar after processing one kilogram of oranges. Miss B's formula yields Y grams of sugar processing one kilogram of apples. Sir E's formula dictates that one kilogram of processed fruit would yield Z grams of sugar. Sir E's formula is unreliable, failing to provide an ascertainable result. Like Sir E's formula, E equals mc squared lacks specificity in identifying the kind of matter comprising the mass, m, used in the equation. One cannot know what kind of matter TNT, automotive gasoline, etc., produces how much energy. Scientists in the energy business must use their tests, experiments, and research results to modify the formula. Without such augmentations, the formula is incomplete and unusable. A perfect description of a converting process. The formula E equals mc squared is not helpful as a mathematical or chemical formula. As Einstein designed it, the formula is a map for every necessary step in converting mass into energy, noting three vital inseparable elements – mass, velocity, and energy. Mass is the source, energy is the result. Of the three elements, only velocity can start and finish the calculation. 
Thus, one must approach any calculation using the formula with two fundamental questions. 1. What is heat? 2. How is it created? To address the first question, one can turn to a NASA publication on heat. The universe is made up of matter and energy. Matter is made up of atoms and molecules, groupings of atoms, and energy causes the atoms and molecules to always be in motion, either bumping into each other or vibrating back and forth. The motion of atoms and molecules creates a form of energy called heat, or thermal energy, which is present in all matter. Even in the coldest voids of space, matter still has a very small but still measurable amount of heat energy. Energy can take on many forms and can change from one form to another. Many different types of energy can be converted into heat energy. Light, electrical, mechanical, chemical, nuclear, sound and thermal energy itself can each cause a substance to heat up by increasing the speed of its molecules. Thermal energy can be transferred to other objects causing them to heat up. When you heat up a pan of water, the heat from the stove causes the molecules in the pan to vibrate faster, causing the pan to heat up. The heat from the pan causes water molecules to move faster and heat up. So, when you heat something up, you are just making its molecules move faster. Succinctly, the motion and subsequent friction of atoms, molecules, masses and objects create heat. As the editors of NASA 2019 point out, when you rub your hands, sharpen a pencil, make a skid mark with your bike, or use the brakes on your car, friction generates heat. Indeed, friction is responsible for almost all heat creation in the universe. Examining a meteor's burning process. When a fast-moving meteor enters the Earth's atmosphere, encountering air, it endures the friction created by the interaction. Upon heating, the meteor's molecules, particles and atoms move faster and faster, increasing thermal energy production. At some point, the meteor burns up or explodes, its mass transforming into energy. Describing it in full, a mass, meteor, moves. While moving with high velocity v, the mass interacts with air. The interaction creates friction generating thermal energy E. The newly born energy triggers explosions that push everything, particles, atoms, etc. in all directions at an extremely high speed. Being pushed, everything pushes its neighbors creating a chain of motions in the form of spherical waves. More friction, more explosions devour a part of the whole mass, transforming it into heat, thermal energy, and light, photons. Velocity initiates the process. The faster the movement, the sooner the process begins. Two kinds of speed are identifiable in this phenomenon. 1. The mass's velocity necessary to produce friction to the point where the converting process can initiate. 2. The velocity of atoms, particles, etc. at the instant when the transformation from mass to energy is proceeding. The first speed, normal, is similar to the speed of striking a match. The second speed is quite different. According to E equals mc squared, during the process, atoms, particles, etc. must reach the maximum velocity allowed in the universe, light speed. Maximum heat and light appear with burning. An explosion confirms the formula's factuality. Using E equals mc squared, one can determine the initial force that pushes photons forward with lightning speed, resulting from an explosion or a flame. Without identifying E, or particularly the kind of matter, m, the methodology does not appear not as a mathematical formula, but as a description of the process of transforming mass into energy. The last mystery. Einstein's famous formula becomes increasingly complicated when applied to calculating the quantity of energy converted from a mass. To determine the energy yield, the mass does not require identification. Any mass moving at extremely high speed shares the same fate when transformed. However, mathematically and physically, every kind of matter dictates the quantity of energy it produces during the process. 
the formula fails to require this pivotal information. Moreover, the speed of light, C, is more than adequate to begin and finish the process. There is no need to subject mass to C squared. One can reasonably question why Einstein used C squared instead of C. The answer lies in the characteristics of spherical wave and the movement of photons. An exploded bomb generates heat, photons, and blasting force. Everything is pushed outwards in all directions creating spherical waves. To calculate the surface of a sphere containing all affected photons after an explosion, one uses s equals 4 pi r squared, but c squared replaces r squared. Mathematically, the derivative formula uses c to represent distance, c being the radius of a sphere, using the speed of light to measure how far a photon travels from the explosion's center to a spot on the sphere's surface. Since photons move with light speed, this distance, or the radius r, is r equals tc. In time, time t equals 1 second, r equals 186,282 miles. The explosion of an atomic bomb lasts slightly less than a microsecond, or 0 0.0000008 second. The calculation of this light sphere's surface will be S equals 12.5664 times 0 0.0000008 times 186,282 squared. Einstein simplified the above calculation to E equals mc squared. However, Einstein left out 4 pi, or 12.5664 probably because, except for photons, everything has mass greater than photon would move much slower than C. In addition, unlike photons, the heat, the energy, the blasting force and the remnant of masses velocities drastically decrease over time and dissipate long before reaching the sphere's surface. Such elimination cancels the role of 4 pi. In his brilliance, Einstein detected all the physical reasons to create a simple but invaluable formula. Einstein and scientists who use E equals mc squared with slight modifications to calculate the quantities of energy released from masses generally produce satisfactory results. Despite some mathematical flaws and contributions to creating nuclear power plants and stocks of nuclear arsenals, Einstein's work would have constituted one of the world's most significant scientific contributions if E equals mc squared had only accurately described the process of converting mass into energy. Especially, it explains how photons were born with lightning speed. Combined with the characteristics of moving in chain, this newly discovered information closes a huge gap in our knowledge, completing our understanding of photons' movement in the universe.